Well, electric vehicle sales continue to surge. It's expected that EVs will make up about 18% of all vehicles on the road by the end of the year, which is up 4% from 2020. Now, the benefits are obvious, eliminating the cost of gas and helping the environment. But tonight, in our Question Everything, we're asking, are EVs as green as we think? Chris Tanaka went looking for answers. We're catching up with Jonas as he charges up his EV at the Newton Service Plaza. For people like me that commute a lot around the state, it's kind of a no-brainer, you know what I mean? A new EV loyalist, it was not a hard sell for him to make the switch, even if his old ride was a Mercedes. I had a C63 AMG, so I had a V8 twin turbo car. So what was your mileage? <laughs> Maybe 16 on a good day. <laughs> Jonas is like a growing number of EV owners who are ditching internal combustion for greener pastures. I said to myself, yeah, it's definitely going to be doing something for the environment, and it's definitely going to be something, doing something for my pocket also, so why not? But just how environmentally green are they? We asked an expert. If I were to characterize an EV, I would say it's more beige than green, right? Transportation expert Jim Aloisi throwing cold water on anyone who thinks it's just rainbows and butterflies being emitted from those EV tailpipes. It's certainly greener from a tailpipe carbon emissions perspective, no doubt about that. But every externality of automobility, everything an automobile depends upon, the parking facility, the, the roadway that it operates on, those are highly carbon intensive. Then there's the vehicles themselves. The battery makes them extremely heavy. The small Chevy Bolt, well, it's heavier than the full-size Malibu. And the standard Tesla Model 3 can outweigh a mid-sized SUV. The heavier the vehicle, that tire friction will be doing more damage to the pavement and emitting more particulate matter. PM 2.5 is the term. The particulate matter that comes from heavier vehicles is uh, is is less, you know, it's a small issue and especially relative to what we're getting from tailpipe emissions um, and especially what we'd be getting from internal combustion engines. Ben Prohaska is with the Electrify Coalition. He points to macrocosmic benefits as well, like getting off oil and away from the countries that control the worldwide market. And so that means we're price stable. Uh, it means it's good for the, the, our democracy. It's good for our national security. It's good for our economic security because electricity is also incredibly price stable. Aloisi is a proponent of EVs, but he says a further mindset shift has to happen. We can't just think about cars. We've got to think about all sorts of transportation. If the choice is internal combustion engine or EV, go with the EV. What I am saying is we need to move 10, 15, maybe even 20% of people who drive today to not drive but to take transit and rail. And that could be a tough sell to EV loyalists like Jonas. You like it. Oh, yeah. I love it. It's, it's a dream. It's a dream. <laughs> Chris Tanaka, WBZ News. Hmm. A lot to think about for people making this decision now and in the next few years. Yeah, I think people think it is a slam dunk, and there's no question there are a lot of great things about electric vehicles. I'd like to have one at some point, but there are just a few things to think about that maybe you haven't heard about before. That's right, and Chris raised them right yeah. there. Good job.